Here we are in Silver City, New Mexico on a beautiful afternoon of July. It's about 95 degrees outside, but inside our house it's nice and cool. And we're going to start with a Dennis McGee waltz that we learned, uh, what, 40 years ago? More than that. <laughs> Back when we lived in Eunice from Dennis himself. He used to come and ha sit on our set porch on Saturday mornings and play with us. and. Uh, it was we, we had a great time with him, and this is one of the tunes he taught us then called Bal a Charlo, uh, Charlie's Dance, I think it would be yeah. translated as. And it's in the key of D, and it goes way up high to the high D. And first, we're gonna I'm gonna play it by myself, right? Yes, and then the second round, uh, second time around, he's gonna second it, and then we're gonna switch back and forth between uh, the melody and seconding, okay.
that wasn't too fast. Yeah, Janie, you started out a little fast. I did. I, I was forgetting it was supposed to be slow. We have a picture of Dennis here. Huh. If I can fit, fit it into the middle. That one right there I'm pointing at. That's him and me oh, in 1978. Beautiful picture. <laughs> yeah. Yep, he was, he was a total character. He'd yeah. come over on sun, Saturday morning and he'd, first of all, he'd take his pistol out of his pocket and put it on the table. And we'd say, Dennis, <clears throat> you didn't need to bring your pistol. And he said, well, and then he takes his wallet out and he opens it up and he just went, lots and lots of hundred dollar bills. And he said, that's my bank. He said, me, I don't believe in them bank, no. I have to have my pistol. And then he would bring our daughter donuts, and she just thought he was the bee's knees. Yeah. We never bought her donuts, so. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Dennis. We're hippies, gonna... <laughs> hippies don't buy donuts for their kids. You know? No. And so we're going to do another one of his tunes, and this time Ken's going to play it, and I'm just going to play guitar back up. And it would work very well. We've used it for square dances, contra dances. It's actually straight, even. Well, so was the last one. Yeah. And this is called Contra Dance de Berza in the key of G. Play it by yourself. So, yeah.
that's well, pretty uh, quirky. Thank you. Quirky Dennis. Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I wanted to mention that those two tunes, uh, the one he just played is actually on this CD. It's called Slice of Live. <clears throat> and the one we played before, Bala Charlot, is on this one. Uh, tw uh, what's it called? Home on the Great Divide. Yeah. And all our CDs are on our website, uh, bayouseco at, at, uh, dot com. Bayouseco dot com. And, and don't forget there's a PayPal thing and that benefits the people who are putting on this thing. Um, we're not, it's not paying us anything. We wanted to donate it to, to Berkeley Old Time yeah, Music Festival. Berkeley Old Time Music Festival. So. And you know, there's a lot of volunteer work, including Christy McCain, our wonderful host yeah. today, hostess. Yeah. And she's doing this as a volunteer and she's really good at it. I'll tell you what, she spent about a hour and a half with us last week getting all the levels set and another 40 minutes today making sure everything was right so if it's not right it's not our fault <laughs> no i don't mean that <laughs> <laughs> but we're just happy that you can join us for our style of old time music right i i don't know why appalachian music is only called old time but all music that's old is old time isn't yeah. it yeah, that's right. And, and we're old, so it's old time music because we're playing it. So so the next thing we're going to play is a beautiful old waltz from New Mexico. Can you hold the picture of Cleo? Yeah. This we learned from Cleophas Ortiz about, oh, 30 years ago. Can you see it? Point to him. Uh, no, it's, it's, it's over here. Yeah. Oh, back, everything's back. No, that, down here that's Ken Ray. Yeah, there he is. Oops. <laughs> we get, there, there we are. Yeah. That's him. And he was just a, a total gent. We loved him. He lived to be 86, born in 1910. And he knew this old waltz. He learned it from his, what he called his primo, which is his cousin, Emiliano Ortiz. And it's very, uh, it's in a key, he played it in G minor, but we're going to do it in B minor yeah. because it's really pretty on the accordion. Right. And, uh, it, it's a, got a, definitely a Sephardic roots. There were a lot of people who came to New Mexico from Spain to get away from the Inquisition. And they were known as crypto Jews. They had to hide and pretend they were Catholic. But they also kept up their traditions. Well, is that what that meant? I always thought that meant they were from the same island as Superman. No, <laughs> no, okay. Ken. Oh, well. Anyway, they, uh, there's, we know several, three, at least three, minor waltzes that we've learned from the old fiddlers here that definitely have Eastern European roots without a doubt. So, Valse Emiliano, B minor. <laughs> guitar players uh -huh. those last two chords are an A and a D yeah it goes so it ends on D know, major it ends on D major because that might have confused somebody out there you know were they looking confused <laughs> well I can't really tell because I can't see that well but I'm sure if there's a guitar isn't player, that just a great banjo, tune though I'm it's not, actually on I'm sure Brendan figured out right away <laughs> but the rest of them might have had a trouble it's on it. this record violinista de Nuevo Mexico Cleophas Ortiz, which is simply him playing a lot of the old, his old tunes uh, with just bare minimum backup guitar backup. 
and uh, so it's on there, but it's in the key of G minor. And we've never, re well, we recorded it once with Gilles Pop on his friend's CD, but we've never put it on one of ours. But anyway, we'll do a few more times. Yeah. Is that too fast? Is, it, is, that, is that all right with everybody? I, I think that sounds perfect. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good, okay. <laughs> plays at G minor, but, and the thing is, is his, his, uh, his cousin. <laughs> it made me cry. I was thinking about Cleo. Yeah, his cousin <laughs> Emiliano was a lot, was the age of his father. And we were taking him around to schools and we're trying to get some NEA grants to help him. But at that year, somebody was in charge and they said that because he learned it from his cousin, he couldn't get any NEA grants. Um, <laughs> Instead of his father, and, and we just shook our head and says, okay, that's the way it goes sometimes, but, um, <laughs> you know, we got him out there anyway, and, uh... Oh, he played at the Smithsonian at the Folklife Festival, and he played at Port Townsend two times, and, yeah. and lots of places yeah, we took we him around. Him, we got him all over the place, and he was amazed. Oh, he was... And when we got to Port Townsend, and he looked at those huge buildings, those three-story wooden buildings, he looked up and he said, mucho madera, lots of wood. <laughs> he couldn't believe how much wood. Well, Christy asked if we'd sing a Carter family song, and definitely old time here. Uh, I said, well, I didn't think anybody did much singing on this uh, jam thing, but I said, okay, fine. And so I'd like to sing this Carter family song. I learned way back when I lived in London in the mid 60s and it was recorded by them in 1935 and it's called my hearts tonight in texas though i'm far across the sea and i was far across the sea at that time and i had never been to the rio grande i never believed i might even live near it and when we lived in albuquerque we lived about a mile from the rio grande but anyway the song just resonated with me back then and still does and it's going to be in g and Ken's going to play a lovely fret and a spanjo made by our friend Bill. Bob. Bob in, uh, in Bob, Bishop. Bob Bishop. And yeah. we can't think of his last name. I'm sorry, we should. Brendan's got it. Oh, good. 
Come on, Brenda. You got it? Bob Thornburg. Thank Thornburg. you. Thornburg. That right? That's it. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. Thank you. Usually I can remember, but you know how it is when you get older, you know, those things. Well, just... we were in the midst of building this house that we live in, and we weren't playing hardly any music. It was a constant, you know, slogging away every day. And I had been out to see uh, Irene, my harmony sister, and Paul, and he had one of these beautiful Bob Thornburg banjos. And I said, I want to get one of those for Ken as a surprise to thank him for such hard work on this house. And so I ordered it, and one day it came UPS, and Ken said, we didn't order anything UPS. And I said, oh, I don't know, open it up and see. And there it was, and it was just, I just said, I want to appreciate what you've been working on in this great big house we live in, and we've lived in now for 23 years. And it's just a great house, and y'all should come visit. Yeah. Our doors are open. That's right. <laughs> okay. In the distant state of Texas, by the Silver Rio Grande, strolled a couple out one evening, was two sweethearts hand in hand. Twas the rich man's pretty daughter, and the lad she loved so dear, for tomorrow they must part for many a year. My heart's tonight in Texas, though I'm far across the sea. The band is playing Dixie, and there's where I long to be. Dad says, sir, I'll marry, but although here is my hand, my heart's tonight in Texas by the Silver Rio Grande. Sir Earl, that's like a double, a double positive for double somebody honorific, royal. Yes. <laughs> and I first heard the Carter family when I was a teenager living in New Jersey. I had a transistor radio, and I listened to it in bed at night. And I could pick up WWVA Wheeling, West Virginia. And I'll tell you what, the Carter family changed my life. They you totally mean? opened me up to first of all women singers who sang low, and just great. Just a great trio that, the, with the sound they made and the incredible rhythm they made, and all of it was totally life changing for me. Jeannie, how all some, right. some people in the audience have never heard that one. Uh, yeah, probably not because <laughs> it's not that well known. But uh, we have that big collection, Bear Family Records, with 12 CDs that came out in Germany. And I looked it up on there, and it's, it's uh, recorded in 1935. 
Yeah. So let's see. Next, it's going to be. Oh, we're going to take you to Arizona. What you yes. tell them? It's hotter in Arizona than here. Oh, much. In southern Arizona, it's a whole lot hotter. A whole lot hotter. And so we are. So you don't have to go there. No, there. This man right here. Right. Right. Can you see it, Elliot? Right Everything's backwards for us. There you go. Yeah. But I've been kind of backwards all my life. You oh, know? no, you haven't. Uh, yeah, we, we used to go there uh, quite a lot. And when we lived in Albuquerque, it was a nine-hour drive to Kababi. If you go to Tucson, before you get to Tucson coming from the east, there's an exit called Ajo Way. And it takes you all the way across the reservation to Ajo, which is pretty much on the other side, uh, uh, a mine, an old mining town. And uh, we met Elliot, and he he came to Port Townsend in 1990, I think it was, Something or like 91 that. maybe. And he just took us all by storm. We all just loved the Guachi fiddlers. And so then we started going out there. We asked him permission. He said he'd have to ask the rest of the elders if it was okay. And we used to go out and camp out in a tent. Uh, we only would go in Mar May or September or the winter. We never went in the summer when it was 120. Yeah, we did. We, we did. were out there one time, it was 120 at, well, for a that funeral. Was, uh, oh, yes. Oh, gosh. Yes. That was hot. Yes, that was hot. <laughs> but anyway, unfortunately, he died in when he was only in early 60s. But he taught us a lot. And so these two tunes we're going to play, the Sonora Church Two-Step, which is a Shadish, and the Blackies Polka, are both recorded on the Guachi Fiddler's cassettes, and a cassette, the first cassette, which is now in, just in CD format. But, uh, and so we play them a little bit different because by the time we got out there, he was playing them different. He says, oh, the way they we played them on the CD, on the cassette, it's like, well, maybe we made mistakes and, or maybe we didn't, maybe that's how we played it, but this is how I play it now. So if if you've already learned it the other way from the cassette, then that's why it's a little different. Yeah. You can adapt. Yeah. Yes. Be resilient. So we're going to play this first one maybe six, seven times. And first we'll play the first round uh, together. And then I'll switch off to uh, the harmonies. And the harmonies I play pretty much are exactly what he taught me to do. And I do have a fifth string on this fiddle. I have a... I have a, a low C, and he loved that about my fiddle because he, I could play uh, in three three octaves in the key of D. Okay, here we go. Sonora Church, two step.
Yeah, nice. nice. This one, uh, more memories in Kababi. It's one we made with Scott and Linda, and our friends, and also Paul and Emily a little bit. And it's also on this one, Bouquet. That's our newest CD. <laughs> okay, so now we're going to give you a polka from Elliot Johnson. Blackie's polka, and it was his favorite polka. And it's got kind of funny timing, but I don't know. We're just used to it. When you get used mm -hmm. to the timing, it doesn't seem funny anymore. It just seems normal. But he loved this tune, and when we visit his grave, which he does not even have a headstone or a cross. He used to. Yeah. It's not there now, but we know which one it is in Kababi. We play this tune for him, and sometimes we leave him a fiddle bridge or a fiddle peg, just in case he needs needs one. Yeah. So this is, uh, what, key, what key is it in? Blackie's polka. Yes. What key is it in? Oh, yes. Right. Blackie's polka. What, what key is it oh, in? Oh, D. D. Also D. Yes. Wonderful key of D. Yeah, and it's got a funny little part in there. Um, so we, I, we'll it play goes, it slow. Duh, we'll play yeah, it slow we'll go slow, times. but um, maybe we could stop. I could play guitar once round because it is funny there. I'll we'll play it first together like this. Okay. Show you that and that's right there. That's where the weird part is. <laughs> it goes to a G chord real quickly. Yeah. So Jeannie's going to play guitar on it now. Just for one round or so. In case you can't tell by looking at her. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. Went to G one that one time. Just that little G thing in Just there. Just the way they did it. <laughs> and these actually are not very odd. A lot of their tunes have much odder timings. Yeah, they have a 19 measure shotish, which is real fun. And you know, I wanted to say, well, we're going to play a shotish next, aren't we? Yeah, yeah, I'll talk about it then. Okay. That's all right. Here we go. So a little bit more with Blackie's polka.
Isn't that a fun tune? Yeah, and that's slow. It should be faster, more polka. Yeah. But, polka style, but, uh, you know, that's pretty. It sounds that. good. It sounds good like that. You could play it like an air if you wanted to, you know. You could play it like a jig. And you could play it like a jig. The autumn people, there's only one tune we learned from Elliot that was in 6 8 called Quadria, oddly enough. Quadria. That's the Italians call jig rhythm, Quadria. And we're going to play one on two fiddles. Oh, we are. Uh, it's really nice to see faces of uh, friends out there. So, yeah, I saw yeah. Susie in there for Lynn. a short time. But Isn't that Lynn Osborne? Osborne? Hi, Lynn. Lynn. There and... It's hard to read the numbers here. Yeah. And who's this? This person is fiddling like crazy. Oh, Sheila, yeah. Sheila, oh, yeah, okay. Sheila Stone. Yeah. Anyway, this is so fun. Let me look on the chat thing there. There it is. Oh, there it is. We, we're not yeah. watching the chat because it's too much to think about. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like A, it said. Sounds yeah. like the key of A. Well, this will be an A. This will be an A. So a minor. How did you guess? Oh, okay, this is from this guy. Can you hold it up? Yeah. This is, we learned these, these wonderful cowboy tunes from uh, the family, the Lewis family. And they live, they live in southern New Mexico, very, very near the Texas border. In order to get to their ranch, you have to go to El Paso and out east on 180, and actually 180 is a road that goes through Silver City. It goes from Grand Canyon all the way to Dallas. It's a very old road. And so you're heading out of Texas, out of El Paso on 180, and then you get to Dell City, a place that's called Land of Hidden Waters. Well and, hidden. And that's in Texas. And then you head north again, cross back over New Mexico line, and then it's a dirt road, of course. And 17 miles out the dirt road is uh, where the Lewises live. No signs. Oh, no. no signs. You just have to know where to turn. But this, t uh, this tune, no, no, this next tune is not on any CD yet. Yeah. 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 We hope to be making one soon. We're very busy here with the radio. Let's yes. talk a minute about it with the radio. Okay, yeah. We have a radio station called KURU 89.1 FM, Silver City, New Mexico, and you can reach it at gmcr.org. And every Saturday morning, Jeannie and I... Uh, have a show from 8 to 10. That'd be 7 to 10 uh, California. 7 to 9. I mean, 7 to 9 California time. It's called Roots and Branches. And so we play live at 9 o'clock in the second hour. And you can play along if you want. We usually try to remember to tell you the key. And um, we never Then we know. have live guests now that COVID's kind of yeah. switched over a little bit. Yeah. If anybody we'll wants to come out, <laughs> if anybody wants to come out and be a live guest, you know. That's right. Come on out. We could roast you. Come on no. down, we're dealing. <laughs> we're roasting a chicken right anyway, now. Anyway, yeah, yeah, it's a great radio station, and it has a, a lot of wonderful shows. But uh, we're very proud to be a part of it, and it's all volunteer run. And and there we go. Know, there you go. So this tune is called Jerusalem, and the reason it's called that is because it was named by Pete Lewis, is the cowboy fiddler that we we know, his wife Minnie. It didn't have a name, and this family, the Lewis family, they've lived in this part of Texas for more than a hundred years. They know, or the older guys used to know, at least fifty shottishes. Fifty. I mean, most people back east they know, da 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 that one, and maybe one or two others. But they knew so many, and I love this one. It, we learned it really off of a, uh, a reel to reel tape from Gene Lewis, one of Pete's uh, great. Yeah, it was a reel to reel from the 50s, yeah. And it and the guitar player didn't understand that in the third part there's a minor chord or two. So I, I'm gonna play guitar on it for you at the end a little bit. It's not odd, but it's it just happens to go to F and D minor. But those cowboys, they didn't play minor chords. Mm -mm. So it was a little hard for us to decipher the actual tune, but we got it. Yeah. And we love it, and so we wanted to share it with you a three part called You can imagine just step yeah. hopping to it. It's a great, it's a great rhythm. Yeah. Shottishes are almost endangered species. Yeah, but the last part, I'll tell you the last part, it's sort of the emphasis of the tune is on the offbeat. It shifts. Just so you know. <laughs>
that a great, wonderful shatish? Yeah, it's a nice too. You know, nice. the Lewis's, uh, the Pete Lewis's uncle and grandfather, or Dem yeah. Dempson and Denman. Yeah, yeah his aunt, his his um, grandfather and his great uncle. Great uncle. I'm and, not sure, but anyway, yeah. they were named Denman, Denman and Dempson Lewis. They recorded in 1929 in El Paso, Texas, for RCA Victor. They made us four sides of a 78, 78s. And one of them was a shotish called Calliope, which is just really bizarre and wonderful. But we thought it was almost a little too bizarre for you all. So we chose Jerusalem. But we know a bunch of their shotishes, and they're great, great tunes. Yeah. So I think we're about to finish up. It's 6 o'clock already. Oh. My goodness, where does the time go? We're know. going to do one more tune from the Lewises. And it's going to be yeah. the Fat Doctor. And Ken's going to tell you a few little fine points about the fingering. On yeah, it. It, and if you it's want, an to, if you have any questions about anything, you can ask us after this. But you can also email us at bayuseco at aol dot com, and then uh, so and so then you, we can give you our phone number and you call us or whatever you know. We're open to anything. Come down and visit if you've been vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> Right. So this is a great mm -hmm. tune, the fat yeah. doctor. Why was he fat, Ken? Well, he was fat because uh, people couldn't pay him in cash, so they paid him in, you know, pigs and stuff like that. And so he ate so much, he got fat. Oh. Because he didn't want his profits to spoil. <laughs> so I show think. what you do with that pinky. He uses, okay. He uses his pinky a lot. I don't think, move your fiddle up so you can see it. Yeah, there you go. So we go. I mean, he does all that on a lot of tunes. He hammers on, does that. And so that's a good thing to be able to do, you know, on a banjo or a fiddle. Yeah. Hear that? Even on a guitar. Brandon, yeah. And the guitar players down this way very often play closed chords. Yeah, which is it, which is more percussive and you know, when there's only a fiddle and a yeah. guitar, it makes for a, almost like a drum beat as well. Bless you. <laughs>
what we had planned for you today. Yeah, that's is that, there we go. Yeah, that's about right. Um, really nice to see your faces. Yeah. So many friends there. Yeah, if oh, nice to see you guys. Have any questions? That was wonderful, you guys. Thank you both so much. And thanks, yeah. thank everyone, you. for joining us. Really oh, thank you for being yeah. a great guide. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I've posted all of your information so people can catch up with you on your radio show. And they have your website, et cetera. Good. Good. Well, thank you very much, y'all. And remember to donate some money to the Berkeley Old Time Music Festival. Keep it rolling. Keep it rolling.